Please welcome to the stage, Jeff Gold, MD, founder and CEO, Gold Direct Care. How is everybody? These lights, these lights are really frickin' bright. Um, I wanna thank Zach and the hand crew for inviting me and putting all this on. As my friend Vance said, I feel like I'm more at a rave than uh, a conference, I'm way, like with the disco ball and the lights. Um, just a couple disclosures. I, I haven't done an edible yet. Um, and there will not be a poll coming down at any time soon. So just giving you a fair warning. Um, what I wanted to talk about today is really just kind of what's happened over the six years since I started doing this. Um, when I opened in Massachusetts, uh, six years ago, I was told by many, many people that direct primary care would fail, that I would fail, uh, especially in a state like Massachusetts, where we're so heavily insurance-based with the big Harvard hospital systems. Um, and here I am six years later speaking in front of a disco ball. <laughs> so over the past couple of years, I started thinking, you know, I always had like my initial vision of just getting a DPC open, getting out of the system, saving my career, saving my sanity, and just really practicing medicine. And when I got there, and that finally came to fruition after a couple of years of fighting tooth and nail, you know, to get people in the door, I started thinking, okay, where do we go with this? You know, what, do, what are we doing? Because I really do think that we really are the only group of physicians, I think, from any specialty in the country that are actually doing something uh, to make this system better for the people who matter most. Uh, to echo what Dr. Pearl said in his talk this morning, I'll actually disagree with one thing. I don't think the system is broken. I think it's built exactly the way the rule makers have wanted it to, to function and wanted it to make and wanted it to be, and it's really up to us to change it and fix it and make, make it about us and the patient, which is really what it's supposed to be about. So a quote that I really like, uh, which we'll get to this whole seed thing, is this Mexican proverb that says, they tried to bury us, but they didn't realize we were seeds. And I think there's so many things up against us to make this work. But as you can see every year, like they just talked about, it's growing and growing and growing. And I'd like to see it grow more quickly, but to some degree, there's some really good things about kind of a grassroots slow movement where you're kind of this David versus Goliath thing where, you know, we really need an army. We need more patients. We need more doctors. Uh, we need maybe a couple big name employers who will stand up to the policymakers and the powers that be that really know nothing about delivering care, but think they know how to make the rules that we play by. Um, so my suggestion for next year is I think we should all have like a walk up song. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, what would I, you know, probably use and it would probably be fight the power by public enemy. Cause that's really what we're trying to do is there's a lot against us. So I think, we've planted the seed and now where do we go with that? And I, you know, as much as I really wish that employers had nothing to do with health benefits, I really wish there was a market where you could go and shop for what you need. The reality is that's probably not gonna change anytime soon. So a majority of Americans, where do they get their health benefits from, but through an employer. And I think that that's kind of where we have to start looking. So a couple of years ago, I woke up in the middle of the night and I had this vision of like, and it's not very different from like what a lot of people I think envision when they look at what the ideal healthcare ecosystem looks like, but it's my vision and the slide, one of the slides I'll show you, my 12 year old daughter helped me cause I'm not really good with technology, but I woke up in the middle of the night and I drew it on a piece of paper because what I've seen having worked for the big hospital system is doctors try to survive, and this is really for specialists too, we try to survive one of two ways. We, we either get vertically bought up 
you know, by these big groups or hospital systems. And now, you know, there's a lot of PE money that everybody's going crazy about buying up these practices, but it's this vertical. And then there's the rare chance where, you know, the horizontal way where independent primary care docs that are in the fee for service model, which in Massachusetts around Boston, there's really not a lot left, but they try to form these groups, you know, these IPOs and try to get better negotiating power with insurers and hospitals and all that. And none of them work. And the reason they don't work is because I really think we have to start looking at healthcare as a wheel and, and not as this linear type thing. So I'm going to try to figure out how to use, I don't know where the slides come up or if they do come up or, oh, there it is. Can you see the slide? I'm looking at it. Okay. Um, so I came up with this idea and it's this like kind of brand new business entity I've thought of called the Starseed Group. And I'll explain kind of what a Starseed is. It'll probably fit really well in, in Denver. Um, Cause I think everybody in this room is a Starseed in a different way. And what I hope to do with this business model is really have an open platform where I think we have to stop working in silos where benefits people are here, the employers are here, the doctors and patients are here. I think everybody needs to stay in their lane and do what they're best at. I don't know how to write a health plan, nor do I want to know how to write a health plan, but how do we how have we gone decades with health plans being written and constructed without doctors having any say in how it's built? what it does, how it functions, because all we do in healthcare disruption is we invest in all this great technology and all these fancy bells and whistles. But what we haven't done is we haven't invested in the core humanity of medicine and the patient physician relationship, which I think, you know, you can track data, you can track quality metrics all you want, but there's so many intangibles that go into that uh, you know, one example I use at a conference that I spoke at a few uh, months ago to a stop loss carrier is, you know, asking the room how many people have had a conversation with their primary care doctor about end of life care, you know, and what they do and don't want. No one, no one talks about it, but yet just as, a, as an example, how much waste and money is spent because primary care doctors in the system don't have time to sit and have that really tough but important conversation about what you would and wouldn't want done, God forbid something happens. So who's paying that bill when it's futile medicine that's being done? And that's just an example. I mean, the, these are the intangible things that we know every day as primary care doctors, the value that we bring, but yet the system and the powers that be have totally devalued what we do. And the reality is without us, as we witness every day, the system crumbles. We've basically taken this beautiful, built this beautiful mansion, you know, with all this fancy crap, and yet we've put it on a foundation that's rotting with termites, and we somehow expect it to fix itself. So what we need to do is really focus on building that foundation, and instead of building from out in, we need to start building from inward and outward because it all starts with the patient physician relationship in primary care, and we've totally ignored that. So the hope with this type of platform is that benefits advisors, TPAs, doctors, employers, patients, we can all actually put our bullshit aside and like work together and bring like our own knowledge from that silo into this wheel that we can collaborate and really find the people that have the same incentives we do, which really should be all of us because we're all patients and we all have family that have been affected by the shit system we have. So why would we not want to invest in something that, yeah, we all want to make money. Money's great. I want to make money. I'm not afraid to say it, but we can do it the right way. You know, we can do it by providing something that is really high value, high quality, accessible and affordable. And like I've always said, it's kind of like one of my quotes is, I'm not, I think a lot of people think that DPC docs are anti-insurance 
or you know, anti-establishment. And I'm like, I'm not anti-insurance. I'm just anti-insurance for dumb shit. Stop paying, you know, for a five dollar lab test with an insurance card that has like a hundred percent finance rate on it. It's just stupid. So a lot of what we have to do is educate. So the next slide is WTF is a star seed. And I'll read it to you. This is from the internet. People are gonna think I definitely smoked before I got on stage here, but um, star seeds are souls traveling from other planets. They're incarnated on earth to inspire and heal human beings, to bring light and knowledge that will uplift the human race and are here to participate in awakening others' consciousness to help the planet's evolution. Star seeds will agree to come to earth to fulfill their mission. However, when they get here, they are made to forget their true origins. Uh, and many go through their existence on earth without knowing where their souls really came from. I wonder that every day. Uh, they forget their homes and their missions, but once they awaken, they will see clearly what they must do. And that's when they start to live out their purpose. So for anybody that really knows me, this is like totally out of left field for me with this kind of stuff. But I just thought it was really poignant. Someone mentioned the word to me like at a conference years back. And I was like, this just kind of makes sense. Like we're all star seeds. We all are here for a purpose to make things better. And the system like really can't get worse. I mean, the bar, the bar is pretty low here um, to fix it. So this is the wheel that like, I kind of came up with in my head of what I think like a system really should look like. And as you can see at the hub, it's the patient, preferably a DPC doc, but I'll tell all the benefits people in here, just what I said at a conference about a month ago, there was a bunch of benefits people. If you're building these really cool plans with all these great stuff, you know, fiduciary PBMs, like all this stuff, if your employers are not having their employees at a minimum use an independent primary care doc that isn't owned by a hospital system, your plan will fail. Preferably, you need a DPC doc because the one thing that no one talks about, and I think we really undervalue ourselves, is our ability to navigate people through this wheel, which they can't do on their own. You know, I don't go buy stocks because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I have a financial advisor and I still don't know how to manage money. How are we expecting our patients to navigate one of the most labyrinthine systems in the world without a guide? And that's really what, as a primary care doc, we're supposed to do. So at the core, you know, and everybody says this term wellness, I hate that term. To me, it, it's what primary care used to be. Like just good primary care was taking care of people, keeping them well and being there when they're sick and they need help, whether it's chronic disease, acute disease. Now we have a whole industry based around wellness. Well, to me, it was just primary care when I grew up. but. We have, we actually, at our clinic, uh, about two months ago, we actually built in a mental health service that all of our patients now have access to, whether it's, they need a social worker, CBT, ongoing therapy, substance abuse, it's all part. I mean, when you think about it as a primary care doc, most of the mental health is coming to us. And in the system, it's impossible to do, but when you're in a DPC clinic and you actually have the ability to find an appropriate counselor for that patient in front of you, because as we know, it's not always a good fit. All of that stuff can just be built in. And if you focus on that little hub of the wheel, so much of that stuff on the outside where the, where the dollar signs increase as part of the plan design, you less and less people get in there, which is what we want. We want to keep people safely and accessibly in that hub. What we do is in the system is just refer out, refer out, refer here, refer here. No one takes cost or care really into consideration and you can't ignore one or the other. So the, the way this wheel functions is the affordable stuff is kept in the wheel and all the spokes, you know, your imaging, your ancillaries, all that eventually can be built out to do direct contracting and get rid of insurance unless it's something that's really insurable. You know, you need the ICU, you need a transplant, you're in the hospital for a prolonged period of stay. That's when people don't care about cost. They just wanna be taken care of and that's insurable. The rest really is not insurable and that's part of the major reason why everything is so bloated. 
you know, people say like a 50% discount. Well, 50% discount off what? No, no one knows. And that's what we have to do is we have to guide people through this. So, you know, my thought is with this kind of wheel is you have the plan built, it's all encompassed in that wheel and you try to keep people to the center instead of this horizontal or vertical garbage that we've tried, you know, for decades and doesn't work. So I'm always open for comments. I'm always open for feedback. You know, it's, it's just the vision of what I see doctors taking back the system for patients and even getting back to like community type hospitals, which, you know, were everywhere when I was growing up, you didn't have to go into a big tertiary medical center when you had double pneumonia, you could go and get treated. I mean, a lot of places now are even doing hospital care at home, as long as it's safe, you know, and it's a condition that they don't need the hospital. If you're a self-insured plan, you eliminate all of those unnecessary facility fees. You know, the $50 aspirins, like all the crap that gets marked up just by building something that actually, in my opinion, just makes sense. This is to me just common sense. And I don't know why you know, this isn't everywhere, but that's what I hope to build with everybody here. Um, so I only put a few slides up. I hate slides, but uh, the wheel is really what I wanted to focus on the most. But I really hope that for the people here who are considering DPC or thinking about it, I think what we need to do better as existing DPC docs and services is we need to make an easier path of entry for our colleagues. I mean, one of my you know, obviously biggest missions is helping patients get better care, better access to affordable care and quality care. But my second mission is I really wanna be a hero to my colleagues. I don't want them to have to do the stuff that we did to get out of the system and take on a huge amount of debt or risk, you know, our career or mortgage, whatever. And the way we do that is we increase this demand for employer groups to really start thinking that 50% of their employees don't even have a primary care doc, or if they do, they don't even know who that person is. And, you know, we're here to build this together. Um, I think a lot of my colleagues are very, you know, anti-middlemen, and I totally, totally get that. I'm a DPC purist at heart. I wish there was no government interference, you know, policymaker interference, but the reality is that's never gonna go away. So how do we find a way to work together and take back control? I mean, a lot of DPC practices get compared to HMOs. Well, in a way I see that, but back when HMOs were popular, we had no control over where we were sending people, how much the monthly capitation was. Now we're in the driver's seat because this system's really falling to pieces and they need us just as much, if not more than we need them. So let's like bury the swords and just try to work together um, and really build something that our kids and our grandkids can, you know, be proud of and not go broke from. And I think all of us, you know, have that mission at heart. Um, I always, I'll, I'll probably screw it up, but one of my favorite quotes is from uh, Buckminster Fuller. And uh, he was an architect and he said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality to change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. And the only addendum I make to that is there is a lot of good that we have. You know, we have great doctors, we have great hospitals, we have, a real, we have so much that you don't wanna get rid of that completely, but we need to get back to the core of what medicine was about, the humanity of medicine, the art of medicine, and that all starts with, with primary care. And I think once people start realizing the power that primary care has when it's allowed to function the right way, which is really what DPC does. You're not a referral list anymore. You're not just sending everybody out uh, because you have eight minutes to spend with them. You're actually really digging in. You're looking stuff up with patients, which I think they really appreciate. You know, um, you know, we use Rubicon MD. We have all these other services, which are huge value adds to keep the patient in that hub of the wheel, which is where I think we belong most of the time. So anyway, thanks for your attention. And uh, I'm looking forward to relaxing now that the nerves are gone and hopefully I didn't F up too bad. Thanks.